All right. Hi, my name is Nadav. I work for Medic, and I'm here to talk about uh, to talk with you about implementing simple cryptographic algorithms in Scala. Scala being a concise language that's that we found very good for that. So cryptography is notoriously hard to get right, and you really don't want to get it wrong. And our product, which uh, involves uh, core technology, is uh, cryptographic in nature involves some third-party cryptography and uh, some of which wasn't available in well-tested uh, well code that we could rely on. And um, reading through some available Im implementations for cryptographic algorithms that we required, um, well, some of it is just a lot of code, very verbose, very difficult to keep track of, and we're talking about really simple algorithms. So we were left with the choice of either picking up libraries that we don't trust and can't really, tr don't want really to maintain in the future, uh, or you know, bury the head in the sand, uh, bury our head in the sand, and uh, just be oblivious to future uh, crises, or roll our own. Now, people aren't really uh, you know, happy to write cryptographic code that they aren't absolutely required to. That's considered something that you want to avoid. And yet, um, some algorithms are really very simple, and so long as you have nothing that you can trust available, and you keep uh, you know, close track of just how the algorithm is defined, and you can see how that translates into code, you can establish good trust in your code and feel very well, feel, feel very good with what you have. So uh, I'm going to discuss one specific example um, that we encountered. Um, so um, back in 1979, in order to discuss this example, so back in 1979, Sony came out with the Walkman and uh, Alien was a blockbuster, and apparently snowboarding was just invented. And two years prior, Shamir, Rivest, and Edelman came out with the RSA crypto system. But in 1979, Adi Shamir came, uh, published a very short two-page paper called How to Share a Secret. And in that paper, he outlines a very simple and useful scheme that allows you to take one secret, reasonably short, it can be a passphrase, it can be a signature key, and it lets you split that secret into N shares um, that you should key, uh, you know, safeguard on your own. And um, you are then able to later combine just K, a lower number, a threshold that you have to meet in order to reassemble the secret. Um, now, this is very useful. In this example, uh, you have uh, three different shares, and you only need two, but you absolutely have to have two uh, in order to reassemble the secret. It means that you can have one, uh, you know, deteriorate or be destroyed, one share, and you can have a hacker be able to steal another share. But so long as you're the only party able to access two shares, the secret is only yours. So how is that accomplished? Well, it's all calculated over polynomials. So um, let's look at a polynomial. This is a k minus one degree polynomial, k being the threshold we, desc we described earlier. So um, here we have, bless you, uh, here we have our, uh, um, uh, well, in order to, well, first thing we have to assemble the polynomial. We have our secret that we want to protect, and that secret is the least significant coefficient. And the rest, k minus one polynomials, uh, coefficients, we choose at random. This is a more concise way of expressing this. And um, then, once we have the polynomial, we calculate um, n different points, uh, and uh, those are our shares. Now, 
this is not where I get to show you code because calculating a polynomial itself is trivial. But the code is, uh, uh, is here for the, sec for the next step of combining our k shares. So now that we have our k shares that we calculated beforehand, um, we want to combine them. So that, in order to do that, we have to reassemble the polynomial that we disposed of earlier when we calculated the shares. So let's build, let, let's build an intuition of how that can be done. We, uh, well, for two points, there, there are infinitely many curves that pass through those points, but only one straight line. Step that up to three points, there is only one parabola that passes through those three points, but infinitely many higher degree curves. And to extrapolate from that, once we have k points, k shares from earlier, we are guaranteed to be able to calculate a unique k minus one degree polynomial. And uh, that allows us to calculate our secret. So how do we calculate that polynomial? How do we reassemble it? Well, for that we use this equation, but I'm not going to describe this equation or what it does. What we did is just plug that into code. And what was important for us is to be able to map every element of the equation to code that implements it. And uh, we have, uh, well, obviously, the parameter, but uh, some bulkier structures, summation, product, and uh, the members of uh, the members that not, that assemble the coefficients, and all that uh, is uh, modular arithmetic, uh, which uh, really well it uh, clutters up uh, code uh, immensely, and modular arithmetic is present in most cryptographic algorithms that are encountered these days. So um, once we have that function, we can reassemble the uh, polynomial, evaluate it at point zero. Point zero is uh, the least significant coefficient, the secret that you wanted to protect earlier. And uh, in this case, here we have a curve that's um, um, well, it's an approximation because the graph obviously isn't over a modular field, but uh, in this case it's five. Well, this uh, does allow us to have a very uh, quiet mind about, uh, you know, homegrown uh, cryptographics. And, um, well, thank you for listening.